boys and girls, and welcome to Brain Bank. Today we're going to read a really fun story called Water Play by Amy Elgie. Now in this story, we're going to talk about all the fun things that we can do with water. Okay, so let's see in these pictures some fun things that these kids are doing. What are they doing over here? It looks like they are pouring water into a glove. I'm not sure why, but they're pouring water. And up here, it looks like they made some ice, so they have frozen the water right there. And down here, this little girl looks like she's playing with some toys, and the toys do you know what it's called when the toys stay on top of the water? Not when they go down to the bottom, but when they stay on top? Yes, that is called float. So her toys are floating in the water. So let's see what else we can do. Ah, water play. So again, we have five kids and it looks like they're all pouring water into different containers that are hanging from a string. Maybe they're playing a game, I'm not really sure, but it looks like they're having fun, huh? Okay, so here, again, we have many different pictures, and the book asks, what can you do with water? Let's read it all together, shall we? What can you do with water? So, once again, the book is asking, what are the different things we can do with water to have fun? Here, it looks like they are pouring water into a bowl. Here, it looks like they have made a paper boat and it's floating on top of the water. And it looks like they're all blowing, trying to get the paper boat to float along the water. Here we have, oh, this little boy is eating an ice cream or a popsicle. It's like ice cream, but when we freeze water or juice with a flavor, we call it a popsicle. And this little boy over here looks like he's pouring water into a net. And it looks like he has lots of toys that he's playing with in the water. So it looks like they're all having fun, I would say. Okay, so here is one thing we can do with water. In all of these pictures, there is one thing that they all have in common. They are all pouring water. They're all pouring water. So let's see what it says. You can pour water. There's that word again, pour, pour. You can pour water. So you can pour water here, here. This is called a watering can. Sometimes we use it to water flowers or plants. Here, it looks like they've made a science experiment. All the water keeps dripping down, but it's pouring. And this boy is pouring as well. So it looks like they're all pouring water. What else can we do with water? Do you have any ideas? Oh, wow. So here is something else we can do with water, but this doesn't look like water, does it? It doesn't look like the water I'm used to seeing, but it is water because you can color water. Let's say it all together, shall we? You can color water. So here we have purple, yellow, red, blue, yellow, and then green, pink over there. So they look like they're having fun coloring their water. Now, if you look at this picture, I want to point this out. This little girl has blue. This little boy has yellow. But look what color it is down here. 
That's not blue or yellow, is it? That's green. So here, they are showing you that when you take two colors, blue and yellow, and you mix them together, you get green. You get green water. So they are having lots of fun doing their experiments with colored water. What else can we do? Ah, yes. We can do this. You can freeze water. Can you say it with me? You can freeze water. Very good. And here, freezing water means to just put it in a very cold temperature until it becomes hard or a solid. So here, it looks like they are making some ice with water. And here, they are eating yummy popsicles with their frozen water. And here, it looks like they've made some ice cubes as well. And he is holding them, but they seem to be very cold in his hand. Okay. Ah, this is something else we can do with water. Maybe you've done this before at home or in your backyard. You can float things on water. Let's read it all together. You can float things on water. Yes, we can. Now, float, if you remember when I talked about it at the beginning, float means when things go into water, but they stay on the top. So all of these feathers are floating on the water. Now, what happens if I put something in the water and it doesn't float? If it goes to the bottom, do you know what that's called? Not float, but the opposite of float is, I'll write it down at the bottom, sink. Sink. So if something doesn't float at the top, then it sinks to the bottom. And if you look close, I see right here a spoon. She was maybe testing different objects in the water to see what floats and what sinks. And the spoon definitely sinks. Last page, we have a game for you. And in this game, we're going to see which things will float. First, we're going to talk about which things will float. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the story, I talked about floating is when you put something into water and it stays on top. It does not go to the bottom. It stays on top. We call that floating. So here, for example, there is a feather, and the feather is floating. So let's see which of these things will float. Let's see. Do you think the shell will float? No, we usually find those at the bottom of the ocean, so I think no. How about the boat? Ah, yes. Well, if it's a good boat, it should float. What about the ball? Yes, if it's a water ball, it will probably float as well. Let's see, what about the screw or the nail? No, those are too heavy. I don't think those will float. Uh, what about the button? No, I think the button's kind of like the shell. It will go to the bottom. Ah, oh, what about these toys? These rubber toys, the rubber ducky and the rubber walrus. Yes, I think these are rubber toys and they will float in the water. Anything else? What about the cork? Yes, I believe the cork will also float, good. And there's one more thing, is it the marble or the leaf? How many people think the marble? Ah, good, nobody. The leaf will float. The leaf is like the feather. It's very light, and therefore it will float on top. Now, all of these objects we have left do not float. So what do we call it when we put something in water and it goes to the bottom? Kind of like this rock or stone. What do we call that? Very good. If something does not float, the opposite of float is sink. So, which things will sink? Will sink. So,
So let's see, what do we have left? We have the shell, the screw, the button, the nail, and the marble. And those things will sink. Very good. Well, I hope you enjoyed the game we had for you today. And I hope you enjoyed reading the book with me. So study hard at home, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.